Hey guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make these super cute luggage tags. Now with all my tutorials there will be a blog post where you can find the measurements, materials, and tools I use in this video. Those links will be in the description box below as well as the information icon. And if you're not already, I would love it if you subscribed, hit the notification bell to be alerted of new and future tutorials, and of course smash the like button as the kids like to say. Okay, so let's get into the tutorial. So for this tutorial, I will be using a cotton fabric. I backed it with some medium weight interfacing. I'm also using 16 gauge vinyl, and I have links at the blog post, so if you're looking for these materials, you can find them right there for you. And all of those links go to help support my channel, so if you wanna go ahead and click on those, I would greatly appreciate it. So I will be using a directional fabric today, just so you can see how you would do it with a directional fabric. You don't have to think as much if you're not using a directional fabric, so that's why I'm gonna be using that today. I have my little clear vinyl window. And the first thing I'm going to do is back it with that medium weight fusible interfacing. And if you've never worked with that before, it's just a material, it's from Pellon, that you will iron onto the back of your fabric. It's just going to give your fabric more stiffness so you have a more rigid piece. Now I'm going to take the two main pieces and I'm going to miter the top corners. I'm going to measure one inch in from the corner and I'm just going to slice that with my rotary cutter. I did that with both of my main pieces um, and also I did it at the top of my directional fabric. So just keep that in mind that now this is the top of the tag so it is at the top of the print. And those little corners, you can just throw them in the garbage. So this is the main pieces of your tag. Now we're gonna take the window pieces and we're gonna put those with the right sides together. And we wanna make sure everything is perfectly lined up on the sides, just so that we can have a nice even tag in the end. So now I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna measure in one inch from all four sides. I'm gonna draw a line with my pen and because I have that interfacing on, it's not gonna go through the fabric so I can use a pen, a Sharpie, a marker. If you're worried, you can use a disappearing ink pen. So whatever you wanna do or even chalk, but just for video purposes, you can see it nice and clear. And we're gonna sew on those guidelines all the way around. We're gonna use a 2.5 stitch length on my machine. Yours might be different. Um, you're gonna go down to the corner. When you get to the corner, we're gonna leave our needle in, pivot the fabric by lifting your presser foot, and then continue on. You wanna make sure that this is as straight as possible because this is going to be the window of your luggage tag, so you want it to be nice and uniform. Now we're going to cut out the center of this rectangle. I'm gonna go about a quarter of an inch away from the seam and just cut all the way around. And then when we have that cut, we're gonna cut into the corners. We're gonna flip this right side out, which is gonna be a little interesting. You'll, you'll see when we get there. You may have never done this before, but you need to cut into the corners as close to the stitches as possible without actually cutting the stitches. So from here, we're gonna start to warm up our iron because it's gonna help us a lot to do this next step. But we're going to carefully push the fabric through the window and then we're going to kind of fold it back and then we will press the inside of the window. Now, it might be a little bit fiddly to do this, I do recommend using maybe a glue stip that will greatly reduce the headache. Um, you can just baste it with your glue stick as you go, and then as you press it, the glue will dry very quickly. But just don't glue the whole thing right to the edge of the fabric, just like right along the closest edge to the seam. Um, just, just to keep it into place. See how I go? I go right up to the seam there. I don't go to the edge of the fabric. So this might take a few minutes, but you wanna go slow and try to do it as nice and even as possible. You might want have to pull the fabric a little bit in the corners to try to flatten it out as best as possible. That goes back to where you snipped into the corner. The closer you get to those stitches, the sharper and the flatter your fabric will lay when you flip it like this. So here it is all flipped out, it looks very nice. 
we're gonna go to the top of the fabric so like I said before if this is directional we're going to the top of the direction and we're gonna fold it in about a quarter of an inch on both sides towards each other and this is just going to finish off this edge um, this is the only way that I could really figure out how to do this so again if you want to use your glue to make sure that everything stays nice and even you can do that and we're just gonna do a top stitch right along that edge but we're gonna install the window first so like I said before I'm using a 16 gauge vinyl you can use pretty much any gauge as long as it's not too you know not too thin you want you know a good a good gauge I guess you should say so this is 16 you can go for like a 10 a 9 an 8 I probably wouldn't go any lower than that and we're going to do the rectangle around the edge of the window now we're going to do that about 1 8 of an inch away from the edge of the inside window so this is going to be a top stitch and also secure your vinyl onto the piece of course, I do tell you to cut a larger piece just because the vinyl likes to shift a little bit. So you will cut off the excess later on. And then I'm just gonna do that top stitch right along that one side to close that up. So I'm just gonna cut off the excess of that window. So as you can see, it's very important to make that top stitching as nice as possible, especially if you're using a different color contrasting thread because that is a top stitch. If you're using a matching thread, then you might not be able to, you know, might not have to see it as much. So it might not be as bad, but because I'm using the white thread, I want to try to make it as nice as possible. So now we're going to take that window, so that's a finished window, and we're going to put that on top of one of the main pieces of the tag. And as you can see, it is placed at the bottom of the directional fabric. And then we'll take the second piece and sandwich that on top. And this piece is going to be the back of your tag. So if you did, you know, fussy cut your pieces and you wanted to have the nice piece on the back, then you would put that one here. I'm gonna pin all the way around, but if you do pin, make sure you don't pin in the center because we don't wanna pierce our vinyl. And we're gonna sew all the way around with a half inch seam allowance. The reason why it's so large is I wanna make sure that all of the pieces are caught, basically. Um, if you wanted to make it a smaller seam allowance, then your tag would just be about a quarter of an inch larger. So, you know, you can do whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna go all the way around the tag and I'm gonna leave about an inch and a half gap at the bottom of the tag, and that's gonna be used for turning. So I'm just gonna cut off that excess fabric, and then I'm gonna miter all the corners, and that's gonna, again, help to make my tag have nice, sharp corners, make it look like, you know, a nice tag. And it might be a little bit tricky to have to try to flip these, but um, it's not too difficult. Just gonna push that through the hole. And don't mind my hands. Um, I did just get a new puppy and we have a cat and she's a little bit on edge. So I went to go and pet her and she kind of had like a little spazzy moment. <laughs> so she, uh, she stabbed me with basically all her nails. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm just gonna take a sharp tool, not a sharp tool, like a blunt tool. I'm using a knitting needle and I'm just gonna poke out all the corners. And then I did give it a press, but I pressed it from the back and I did it super quick just to give it a few shots of steam. Um, of course, you don't wanna do it too much because you don't want to melt your plastic. So just enough to just press it quick. And then we're gonna fold in that hole that we left for turning and then we'll do one more top stitch all the way around the tag. That's gonna close up that hole and then that's going to finish off the tag. So I always like to use a three stitch length when I do my top stitching. It's a little bit bulky when you do this step. I am using a heavier gauge needle. So maybe a 14. Um, I do have a leather needle or a jean needle in my machine right now. So depending on your machine, just keep that in mind. You want to have a nice sturdy needle, especially if you're going through, um, you know, four layers of fabric plus interfacing. So now I'm just going to finish off my tag with a really cute grommet. 
Um, if you don't have grommets, you can of course hand sew eyelets. There are many tutorials online that you can do that. Um, but I really love the grommet. It really gives it a more professional look. So I'm just going to use my awl, poke a hole about a quarter of an inch away from the center of the tag at the top. And then because the hole wasn't large enough, I just used that knitting needle again just to stick it all the way through because I need the grommet to go right through that hole. So it has to be large enough for it. And then there's a little backing piece for these ones. And I'm going to use my crop -a dial from We Are Memory Keepers to um, secure this grommet. And it's so funny because I've had this crop -a dial for years and not until like, you know, maybe like a year or two ago, <laughs> I realized that it was a grommet setter. I've only ever used it to punch holes in paper. So once I figured that out, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> game changer. I never knew what those were for. I know it's ridiculous, but anyways. So now I'm gonna be using some silky cord and that is what I'm going to use to tie my little tag onto my luggage. So if you have just any kind of cord or rope, you can use whatever you got. So that is pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, I hope that you um, share your luggage tags over on social media, Instagram and Facebook. All those links are below. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next tutorial. Bye guys. Bye.